my presentation, the uh, research research title is molecular depth estimation. Uh, I'm muted already. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, the title is Molecule Depth Estimation Using a Deep Learning Model with Free Depth Estimation Based on Size Perspective. Uh, I'm Takanori Asano, and my co is Yoshiaki Asmura. Uh, we are from Sibora Institute of Technology. So today we talk about uh, depth estimation. So from this point, uh, we will start from uh, background of depth estimation. So depth information uh, represents the 3D scenes. So the depth is utilized in various scenarios, uh, such as auto driving and 3D diseases or uh, slums. However, uh, the depth is uh, often measured by uh, dedicated sensors, like LiDAR sensor. And those kind of dedicated sensors are usually more expensive than uh, typical molecular uh, RGB cameras. So there are lots of uh, research about the deep estimation from single RGB images uh, using a deep learning model. In previous studies, the model based on ResNet or efficient net and other SOTA models in another uh, image processing task like uh, image classification uh, estimate depths. So researchers modified the uh, uh, those models architecture or training method or invented new loss function or augment more data set or use a large data set. Uh, this is a typical uh, research. In other research, to improve the uh, accuracy of uh, network, uh, they provide uh, additional information like segmentation image or a portion of depth from LiDAR sensor or depths from uh, partial laser scanning. And uh, they use it as a hint for estimation. Uh, from these previous research and our research, we assume there are these difficulty of depth estimation. First, the lack of universality in depth estimation. Uh, color and shape uh, and other features in image do not have a direct relationship with depths. So in this figure, we can see same color and same shape chairs, but the depth is obviously uh, different. So it is one reason of the difficult, uh, what the, why difficult to estimate depths. Next, uh, the high randomness of the object part. Uh, compare a picture, it contain only walls to the image, it contain object and walls, especially in the, objects area, the depth varies more irregularly, and these objects is scattered throughout the background, so it makes uh, estimation more difficult, we assume. So from this point, we will explain about the uh, proposed method to address these uh, issues. This is our proposed method ideas first. The utilization of universal rule, like size perspective. Uh, when a small object appears uh, large, it must be close. This is a size perspective. Uh, and the, this size perspective has usually universality. So we uh, suppose uh, we can estimate the depth from an object size in an image and its actual size with using size perspective. Uh, for example, uh, if the small object like hand appears big, it means close. And the big object like pe person appears more small, uh, it must be far from the cameras like this. <clears throat> Next, for depth estimation for object, because uh, estimation uh, depth of object part is more difficult, so we roughly estimate uh, depths of the ob uh, object part in advance and they uh, use estimation result as additional information uh, to their depth estimation model like a previous research we uh, mentioned uh, secondly. 
So this is a pre-depth estimations uh, overview diagrams. First, uh, we use the Euro V8. This is a uh, object detection model. And we use Euro V8 to obtain the object bounding box size and the object actual size. And the next, we build the size perspective model. This model estimates uh, pre-depth, uh, it means rough depths uh, from bounding box size and uh, uh, object actual size. Next, uh, we generate the pre-depth image from pre-depth and the segmentation uh, to be input to the depth estimation model. Uh, after the pre-depth estimation process, it outputs pre-depth image. And uh, so we use uh, pre-depth image and RGB image uh, input to the estimation model. And the depth estimation model generates uh, ultimate estimation uh, images. Uh, this is a rough explanation uh, of our proposed method. So we will explain each process more concretely. Uh, so uh, we want to utilize the size perspective. So we have to uh, obtain the information about the object. So we use your V8 to obtain the bounding boxes and object classes and segmentation. Uh, next, uh, uh, we have to obtain also uh, object actual size. So we prepare uh, some table. It recorded the uh, size of each classes and uh, uh, by referencing the object size table and uh, we determine the size of uh, detected object. For example, uh, if the detected object class is two, it means chair. So then, wireless length size equal 80, 80, 100, like this figures. Next, uh, we build a size perspective model. Uh, this model is a also neural network, and uh, it estimates the rough depths, we call it uh, pre depths, from the size of bounding boxes and the object actual size. So, <clears throat> This model has a role of the size perspective, so we call this model uh, size perspective model. Next, uh, to train size perspective model, we have to prepare a data set. So input data is uh, bounding box wide, bounding box height, object to width, length, height, uh, <clears throat> we already mentioned. Uh, this tensor is created from the outputs of the Euro V8 and object size table. The target is uh, average of the bottom 10% value of depth in object image. The image is cropped to match the bounding box. So this is a, a target data and it means uh, pre-depth. Uh, this is a size perspective model architecture. The architecture is very simple. It has a four linear neural network and the function, and the input is bounding box by the height, object wise, length height, and the target data is uh, <clears throat> pre depth, so it means the average of depths. So after the train and the uh, train, training of the size perspective model, and it, it generates a uh, now it outputs the pre-depth. Uh, we have a pre-depth and a segmentation information. So we generate the pre-depth image. Uh, based on the image where all pixels are zero, uh, we generate the pre-depth image by filling the segmentation area with pre-depth. Finally, uh, we got a pre-depth image. So we input the pre-depth image and RGB image to depth estimation model and the estimate uh, ultimate uh, depths and the generate a depth image. So the explanation is a bit long, so we prepare a summary part. Step one, get the object class, bounding box, segmentation. Step two, determine the size of the object. Step three, build the size perspective model and train. 
and estimate pre depth. Step four, generate pre depth image. Step five, pre depth image and RGB mesh uh, to the depth estimation model. Uh, from this point, uh, we will explain the experiment part. Uh, exper uh, in the experiment, we verify the eff effectiveness of the proposed method. Uh, we compare the proposed method depth estimation model's uh, scores uh, to our depth estimation model that train with only RGB images. This is a baseline model. Uh, we explain the data set. Uh, we create uh, the original data set by Unreal Engine 4 and the NDDS. Uh, NDDS is a plugin tool for Unreal Engine 4, uh, NVIDIA Deep Learning Dataset Synthesizer. A uh, dataset size is 1,000 training data and 200 evolution data. Image wide is 512. Uh, image height is also 512. Uh, maximum depth is 8,192 millimeters, 8 bit resolutions. Uh, these pictures is uh, are created by Unreal Engine 4 and then DDS. <coughs> Next, uh, this is a model architecture of baseline model. Uh, we use the uh, ResNet 18 as image encoder, and uh, we build the up sampling layer. It repeats the conversion to the end up sample up sampling to generate the depth image. Next, uh, this is our method depth estimation model architecture. Because we uh, we use the uh, pre-depth image as a additional input, uh, we add a pre-depth image encoder uh, and uh, its output is merged in the middle of the coder. This is uh, our method model architectures. Uh, next, uh, experimental configuration and evolution metrics. Uh, Epoch size is 25, uh, but size is 8. Optimizer, we adopt Adam. Initial running rate is 0 0.001. And we also use scheduler uh, 0 0.8 times at the epochs 5, 10, 15, 20. 2022, uh, we adopt a reverse Hoover loss as a loss function. And uh, this function is embedded in some famous previous research. So we assume it's uh, effective for our research. So we adopt it. Uh, evaluation metrics, we adopt, we adopt a, uh, MAC loss, reverse Hoover loss, and the following evaluation metrics Delta 1 to Delta 3. Uh, delta 1 to Delta 3 is a little bit complicated, so let me explain. Uh, this evaluation matrix compares the uh, value of each pixel in the image with the target value and uh, show how many pixels are falling within the threshold as a percentage. So Delta 1 to Delta 3 shows the uh, uh, accuracy of the generated image. And this metrics is also uh, commonly used in uh, previous researches. So we adopt it. The result, table one shows MAC loss and reverse Hoover loss. Table two shows accuracy delta one to delta three. Uh, table shows the proposed method outperformed the baseline in all metrics. So this suggests uh, our method as a effective effectiveness for uh, depth estimation. From this point, we will discuss about the experimental result and the current limitation and the improvement. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this figure shows a generated image by uh, baseline model and the hours method and the ground tooth image. Uh, looking at generated image, the outline of the object in our method image is more clear than uh, baseline model. This may be because the previous image helps uh, model estimation simply, and the uh, pre depth is 
uh, image is a one kind of uh, segmentation image. So it might be helpful for generating uh, more clear images. Next, uh, table two is uh, we already showed. Uh, the accuracy delta one to delta three. Table three is also accuracy delta one to delta three, but it's for only objects areas. Uh, table three shows that proposed method is also superior in the area of object part. However, uh, compared to the table two, uh, these matrix is uh, these matrix are significantly low, lower. Uh, this suggests that it is still difficult to estimate to the the depths of the object part as we predict. Uh, and the feature extraction and estimation focusing on the object part may be necessary for depth estimation. Like, uh, yes. Next, uh, table four uh, shows the result when the pre-depth image gradually uh, brought closer to the two value. I mean, the law of target means we use the target value of validation data for size perspective model as pre depths. Uh, law of ground truth mean we use the ground truth value as pre depths. Uh, uh, from the table, uh, the accuracy is improved as a pre depths image approaching a ground truth value. So this result suggests that pre depths image is useful as a hint for uh, estimation and uh, improving free depth estimation means improving accuracy of uh, generated images. <clears throat> uh, limitation and improvement. Uh, first, pixel level free depth estimation. Uh, currently, we cannot estimate uh, pixel level pre depth because the uh, size plus picking model outputs uh, average of depths. So we should modify uh, size pass taking model to be input the object image uh, like these figures and uh, generate a uh, uh, pixel level pre depth image. Next, uh, we should prepare some solution for there's no detectable object. Uh, pre depth image might be almost meaningless. Uh, if there is no detectable object, it means uh, your uh, the object is too small or your V8 is not trained for that object. And uh, we can, or the object of unknown size, if the V8 uh, detect object, but we if, if we don't know uh, the size of object, uh, the pre depth image might be almost meaningless so we should add some condition or some uh, measures <clears throat> so and this is final summary put uh, we propose the pre-depth estimation by using size perspective uh, pre-depth image improve the uh, model accuracy and uh, uh, from the experimental result uh, estimate estimating object part is still difficult and uh, improving pre-depth estimation means improving generated images. And our future tasks are pixel level pre-depth estimation and the solution when there is no detectable object. So we've finished uh, my presentation. So thank you for listening.